Hello, hello, hello. I'm going to discuss with you the solution of the problem where we have a thousand GeV proton which collides with a proton that stands still. It is an inelastic collision. Momentum is conserved, but kinetic energy is not conserved. But of course, in physics, energy is always conserved. And in this case, where we have accelerators like the LHC, the so-called loss of kinetic energy can be used to create new particles. And my question is, what is the maximum mass of such a particle that can be produced in this reaction? Pay attention. It's not so easy. It is part of physics that most of you are not familiar with. In special relativity, the total energy of a particle is kinetic energy plus the rest mass energy. M for me is always rest mass. I just write M, it's always rest mass. There is also gamma mc squared, and it is also this relation which P is the momentum of the particle. Gamma is the Lorentz factor, which is given by this quantity, and the momentum P is gamma times mv. We often use beta in these equations, which is v over c, just for simplicity. It follows immediately from this that the kinetic energy, in our case that is 1000 GeV, is gamma minus 1 times mc squared. If you put gamma in here, then you can solve you can express p squared in a new form, it takes you perhaps one minute of algebra, and you can show then that p squared is also m squared c squared times gamma squared minus 1. So you have to combine this with this. The rest mass energy of a proton is 938 million electron volts. Our kinetic energy is 1000 GeV. And it follows therefore immediately from this equation that gamma is this number. I give you eight digits precision, whereas four would be plenty. However, I want to demonstrate, I'm going to use you four solutions, and I want to demonstrate that all four solutions give the same result to an accuracy of five digits. And the only way that I can achieve that is by now already accepting more digits than I ask you. So you can immediately calculate from gamma what beta is, and this is the number of beta. That particle is almost moving with the speed of light. Notice 0 0.123456 six nines. All right, so let's now look at the particle. Here it is. This is my lab frame of reference. It has gamma. We know V, we know E, we know the mass. This is the proton with speed V is approaching this proton which is standing still. It has gamma 1 and it has mass M. Right in between the two is the center of mass. The reason why it's exactly in between, because this mass is the same as that mass. When this particle hits this one, then of course the center of mass will be here. Center of mass is moving in my laboratory frame with speed V1. With Newtonian mechanic, mechanics, it's easy to demonstrate that this V is twice as high as this one. That's very clear, of course, because this distance is twice as much as this distance. But when this particle is here, the center of mass is also here. So that is trivial. So in Newtonian 
mechanics in an inelastic collision of this kind where some kinetic energy is destroyed, 50% of the kinetic energy is lost. And that would go then into heat. Because, of course, energy in physics is always conserved. You cannot lose energy. But you can lose kinetic energy, which in this process, in your laboratory, if it were not protons, would come out in heat. But in Einstein physics, special relativity, the situation is very, very different. For one thing, V squared is not at all half V. V is not at all 2V squared prime. V is 2V prime divided by 1 plus V prime over C squared. You may have to refresh on your addition or subtraction of vectors in Einstein's theory of special relativity. You may think, well, what is the difference between 2v prime and 2v prime divided by 1 plus v prime over c squared? The difference is enormous, as you will see. We can divide both equations by c, so we get beta in terms of b beta prime. You can solve this equation, high school algebra, and you will find that b prime is almost as large as v. Instead of nine, instead of six nines here, you see three nines here. But that makes a big difference for gamma. So gamma prime, connecting with this prime, is 23 point, call it 1, 1. So, if you were sitting in the center of mass, if that were your reference frame, this object would be coming to you with speed v prime. That is obvious, because if the center of mass moves to this object with speed v prime, then in the reference frame of the center of mass, this object must move towards the center of mass with speed v prime. Since in the center of mass, momentum is conserved, and since both particles have the same mass, therefore, this particle must also approach the center of mass with the same v prime. So in the center of mass, this is a nice way to look at the problem. So they both, if you were in the center of mass, reference frame, this point would stand still in your reference frame. And you would see the 1000 GeV proton coming in this direction with speed V prime and the proton that stands still in the lab frame of reference with the same V prime towards the center of mass. Okay, so keep in mind that, B, that gamma prime was about 23.11. I'm going to show you four solutions. At 15 minutes into this video, my alarm clock will indicate that I have to stop because I only have 15 minutes of power in my batteries. I will then stop and continue with the second video. I'm going to show you four solutions. I will have to assume in all those solutions that the so-called lost kinetic energy, if we call that lost kinetic energy, it's an inelastic collision, is converted all in mass. That is an assumption that I have to make. So this is the maximum possible mass that a particle can have. There are of course other ways that that lost kinetic energy can be converted. Of course it could be converted into 
gamma rays, it could be converted into two particles, maybe into four particles. Yes, there are other ways. We will assume that all that kinetic energy lost will come out in the mass of one particle. What is the maximum value that that mass can have? I will go to the center of mass. Energy is always conserved. I am now sitting in the center of mass reference frame. And so what I am seeing is this. This stands still. This comes to me. Not to me, but comes to the center of mass. And this goes to the center of mass. So therefore, the energy is gamma prime times 2 mc squared. Because remember, the total energy of a particle is gamma times mc squared. You have two particles. And both move with the speed v prime. So this is the total energy. In the reference frame of the center of mass, there is no momentum. So we only have the rest mass particles. This is the rest mass of the two protons, and this is the rest mass of that new particle that I'm going to create. So that's the total energy in the center of mass frame when the two particles, the two protons, have merged. They both come together in the center of mass. I see it in the front of my eyes. I see them hitting each other and instantaneously at that center of mass this particle is being formed. They will all stand still in my center of mass frame and this is their total mass. So this must be equal. Uh, you can solve this equation with your high school algebra and you find that the total mass of that particle is 44.22 times the mass of a proton. Now remember, you started with this energy, 1000 GeV is the kinetic energy of one proton, but you also have the rest mass of two protons, so that is twice the 938 MeV. So this is the total energy when the process, the collision started, when they hadn't hit each other. And now, we have created a particle whose energy in my lab frame, if I go back to my lab frame, the energy of that particle is gamma prime times this mc squared, and that is 958 GeV. Just look at it, almost 96% of the energy that we had available before the collision is now being used to create that particle with mass capital M. I think this would be a good moment to stop in order to make sure that I have enough power and I will now continue showing you Three more solutions. Okay? So make sure you watch the next one also, because it's so wonderful to see the consistency of special relativity if you approach it in a slightly different way.